I, who says Ottawa is a dull, boring town, Julian? That's our reputation. It, it's fun. It's exciting, isn't it? I just, I just, all I just have to say is I was really looking forward to the Ottawa Senators era where they were just going to be this fun, exciting product on the ice. They'd make the playoffs and we'd have all these great stories about Thomas Shabbat doing well and Brady Kachuk playing well. And, you know, if everyone was getting mad about the Jake Sanderson contract in the offseason and he'd prove everyone wrong, all the haters at least. And now it's Wednesday, November 1st, and it just feels like what can go wrong will go wrong like like the shane pinto stuff was bad enough uh, and now we see the news today uh of the ottawa senators losing their first round pick over the next few years now this press conference is coming in the next little while like this last week if to be an ottawa senators fan is exhausting it's no it's not exhausting it's just it, we're in a time machine back to 2018 when it was nonstop weird stories. Remember, it was like Uber stories and Carlson oh, yes. and Hoffman, and you know, it was it was nonstop. But but I'll say this: so uh, as as we're recording this, for the people that end up listening to just the podcast version of this, we're about forty minutes, or whatever, out from a press conference in Ottawa. If you're asking me to guess here, hey Ian, give us a best guess because it was a vague press release announcing a news conference. Ma- basically, a major news conference is coming in Ottawa. My guess on this is that Pierre Dorian is going to be out as general manager. And and the reason why I say that is I, I think, you know, you got a new ownership group in and Mike Ann Lauer and Steve Steos. And when you come in, you know, I think they came in with, okay, we got a fresh set of eyes. Let's see how this plays out. And I don't think they were overly enamored with the fact that they were capped out. Like take the Pinto gambling story out of the equation for a second. I don't think they were happy that they were at the salary cap ceiling and didn't have Pinto signed. So you kind of felt like, oh, okay, that's uh, one strike against you. Now, if you were the general manager and your team has been stripped of a first round pick directly due to your actions or inactions or whatever happened, I think it's two strikes and you're out. That's my guess. So I think at, at, at 315, they're going to announce that we've got a, a significant change in, in leadership that now, now, now the question becomes, and I'd have to get, and I've tr- you know tried to, to to reach out to lawyers on this to see, like, could you fire it? Like, is this is this termination with cause? Like, meaning, wow, this guy actually. Like, one lawyer explained it to me, Julian, and said, okay. like, I think you can make an argument that he that there's been material damage done to your franchise. Like, you lose a first round pick, like that's worth two million, three million real dollars or whatever whatever it is. The actions of the person in charge caused your team to lose that. And if I'm Michael Anlau, I'm livid. I'm like, I roll into town, Julian, on September 22nd as the new owner, and I'm guessing, maybe we'll get the answer to this soon, I'm guessing he didn't know that he was um, part of this here. Uh, you know? Uh, I, I'm I'm guessing he didn't know that this was, like, he's on the hook for this. You know? So, to me... I, like I said, I, I am fully expecting that he will be removed as the general manager. And actually, well, now, let's, listen, I, I, let's go ahead and and, and listen. I, I, I can go ahead and confirm these. Like Elliot Friedman, Frank Cervelli have this out there. I can yep. tell you this with unequivocally, Pierre Dorian will be out as general manager. I, I was, I was kind of just trying to not play it down the middle here, but I was, you know, those 99. Anyway, that's going to happen here. So my afternoon is going to be quite full. Uh, as 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 Pierre Dorian is is going to be out as general manager, and you know Elliot Friedman, Frank Saravelli, the first to put that out in the in the public realm. All I have to say is, first off, wow, uh, yes, your day <laughs> is going to be packed. But just yeah. the fact that the Ottawa Senators start to this season has been as controversial as it has been. It, it's making my head spin, and I have nothing to do with that market. But what I will say about Pierre Dorian is this. I'm not surprised it's come to this point. I think entering this season, his seat was very hot to begin with. I think the Ottawa Senators, it was important for them to get out to a great start and to put themselves in a position where they'd be in a in a playoff position. But the fact that uh, this situation surfaced with the Evgeny Dadnoff yeah. trade, where for, for a refresher for those not in the know, and, and you can fill in blanks if you can here, but the Senators get rid of Dadnoff. He goes to Vegas. Vegas tries to offload him to Anaheim. Uh, 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 details of a of a tr- no trade clause uh, were not necessarily known to Vegas, and then eventually this trade, but 
between Dadnoff and, and, and the Anaheim Ducks is scrapped. And at that time, we thought Vegas was the team in the wrong here. They had already had this reputation of, of the way they had handled guys coming and going from their organization. So they were drawing a lot of criticism. And then in recent days, we hear about new information that suggests that the Ottawa Senators may have been withholding information uh, that essentially made it so that it was their fault, that they didn't tell the Vegas Golden Knights about what was happening here. That's negligent. And 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 and, and the fact that it's gotten to this point, you, you, you're right to bring up the Michael and Lauer perspective in all of this because you're entering this organization. I'm I'm pr- I'm not sure that Ann Lauer knew that the senators were truly at fault at that. And then you have to deal with this already. You were looking at so, story on, uh, on the hot seat here. This gives you the right to, to, to relieve him of his duties as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And, and, and again, we're going to get some answers on that uh, uh, shortly. Here, here's something I, I, I think is interesting too, is mm-hmm. New Jersey. Remember the New Jersey devils in 2010, Signed Ilya Kovalchuk to a 17-year contract, 17 years, which was clearly cap circumvention. The league investigated and said, New Jersey, you're being fined a first-round pick, a third-round pick, and $3 million in cash. You have to give up a first-round pick at some point in the next four years. Well, what happened in that four-year window? Um, They had new ownership. Uh, Josh Harris and Dave Blitzer came in, took over the Devils. And in 2013, when they took over the Devils, they were like, hey – we inherited this mess. Like, this isn't us. They were able to negotiate that down to – they didn't lose the first-round pick. They had to move to the bottom of the queue. If you remember this, they had, they picked, had to pick 30th. They had the fine drop from $3 million to $1.5 million. And a half. I'm only saying – it's unclear to me if Mike Andlauer has the ability to appeal here, but I'm going to say he's going to exhaust every avenue to say that this wasn't my fault I terminated the person responsible for it. And um, I, I I think, you know, for me, that's what I'm interested in. D- d- does the league follow through on this and take the first rounder away from Ottawa? Or is Ottawa able to negotiate this down? Well, that's a we'll good – That well, I, I think the fact that you bring up the New Jersey Devils and what they went through, that's something that the league's going to have to consider here. And that's something that works as precedent if you're Michael Ann Lauer and the Ottawa Senators organization. Um yeah, that's that's how I would see it because giving up a first round pick over the next three years, uh, my understanding is is that uh, they essentially have to announce, I think, within 24 hours of the draft lottery that year if they're going to keep their pick or if they're going to offload it. Um, yeah, I, I think if you're the Ottawa Senators, I can understand why off of precedence, why you'd want to argue this down. At the same time, I, I think this punishment is fitting of of this issue here. Uh, in, in this particular situation, I'll also say that the, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are looking at this situation and wondering, well, why is it that this situation is is merit of a first round pick being gone, whereas Chicago Blackhawks and everything that they went through at Kyle Beach doesn't merit anything like that? I think the biggest thing with that people should know it's that the Sens were in clear violation of league rules in this situation, but that's not going to stop people from kind of comparing those two situations. I, I I think it's disingenuous to do that. I think it, it it's not right to the Kyle Beach situation, and I, and I agree with you. It's um, mind it's you, I'm not origin. saying that I want to compare it to that. I'm saying no, that no, there are no, 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 no. I I know I and exactly. are already and, doing it. And yeah, and I think what what's what's important too is if you look at everything in the NHL through the lens of well, they didn't suspend or fine or whatever Chicago for Kyle Beach, then you're going to just be disappointed in everything. Like like yes. we, we should absolutely hold them to a higher standard on the beach thing. But I don't like, I think it's a better comparison to compare what Ottawa is going through now with Dorian to what Arizona, what happened in Arizona and John Shaka and, yes. you know, and, and the draft combine stuff to Kovalchuk and the circumvention. To me, I think that's a little bit more apples to apples. Um, I understand the frustration. If I'm an Ottawa fan, I feel like, are you kidding me? Like this, this deal that happened 18 months ago and you still like, Let's be honest here. If you're Ottawa, you're an Ottawa fan. You're like, okay, so Vegas, you didn't get what you wanted. Um, like you didn't get what you wanted in 2020, uh, 2022. It blew up in your face. Okay, we get that. But you got a Stanley Cup since. And you got Mark Stone from us at, at some point too. Like what else do you want from us, right? Like you're okay, an Ottawa fan. You're like, hold on, hold on. My, 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 my counterpoint to that is, going back to what I brought up earlier, when, it, when that whole thing happened, 
that was in the middle of when we were looking at Vegas and the way that they were handling players like Mark Andre Fleury and remember the Alan Walsh photo. There was there was a I'm not going to say use the word slander, but the reputation was taking a hit at that point. That was like the latest in a string of things that happened with that organization, right? Like I. I I think if you're the Vegas Golden Knights, you have every right to be angry about how you were perceived in that moment. And yeah, you ended up getting a Stanley Cup at the end of it. And funny enough, Evgeny Dadnov is in Dallas now. He has nothing to do with the Ottawa Senators or the Vegas Golden Knights or even the Anaheim Ducks in this situation. But I also think while fine Ottawa Senators fans could be upset about this, I think if you're a Vegas, if you're a member of the Vegas Golden Knights organization, you have every right to complain about this considering what reputation uh, and the way it's been affected over these last few years. Absolutely. Boy, oh boy, like, like, what's the one that came out? Like, I, I'm too close to this, Julian, because I cover Ottawa. What's the one that came out of left field for you more? The Pinto thing last week or this whole Dadnov thing resurfacing and then it leading to, to Dorian? Wh- which is the one you're like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. I mean, both of them for me, like, yeah, I, I kind of have them on an equal playing field because – Pinto, we're still trying. We were still trying to figure out. Okay, when is he going to sign? When is he going to be available to play? And then all of a sudden, it's like, wait a minute. There's this news popping up, and then it ends up being that. And then there's an entire discussion to be had about gambling within the NHL. This Dadnoff situation coming out of nowhere. I first heard about it like what over the weekend when I was busy doing Heritage Classic stuff. And you're like, wasn't this this wasn't this like two years ago? This was something like that was completely out of sight and out of mind. And all of a sudden, it has led to. Well, this, maybe this is the answer because at least, I mean, with Pinto, the suspension's doled out. He could come back and we'll figure out what his contract thing is. This, a man is about to lose his job or has already lost his job, has already been relieved of his duties. And now the Ottawa Senators, who, again, this has been an exhausting week because the Pinto stuff was announced like Thursday, right? Like this has been such a while, but more than that, really, if you account for the injuries with Thomas Shabbat being out for a while too, and the bad start, like, this is as this is a really wild time for the Ottawa Senators and this start. This is crazy. 